Once upon a time, I actually met. Uh, ah, shit. I, once upon a time, as I struggle and scramble, I met Robert Picardo and I asked him about um, being a cowboy in that movie, Inner Space. And he laughed at me. And then that was the end of that conversation. It was good times. This is, this is Inner Space. We're throwing some cheers at it. It's from uh, Polynight Games. Aspire published it and gave us some keys. Good on them for that. It's done on Unity. You can pick it up for around 20 of your local particular currency. What is it? Inner Space is an exploration flying game set in the inverse, a world of inside-out planets with no horizons. Soar through ancient skis and abandoned oceans to discover the lost history of this fading realm where gons wander. Your greatest journey is within, as I said before. Aspire, send us some keys for this. So thank you for that. I forget what your name is. It's in the email. It's a thing. So this is Chair Q edition. This is where we talk about video games for a little bit. We pick one. We play it. We uh, have a little roundtable discussion. Give it a little bit of QA. See if we can break it. Find some stuff that their QA department maybe should have found before they released it into the wild and we give it a final score based on the chair acquisition one chair means that it's garbage two chairs means that's meh three chairs means it's pretty good four chairs means it's awesome and we apply these to our categories of doom make us with the working shiny sounds controls and fun so pedro since this is your first time back on the next game cast since you got deported and then reported did it make with the working yeah all the ports, the wrong ports, unfortunately. No, uh, the game actually worked fine over here on the Ryzen 5 1600 uh, with the GTX 1080 on Ubuntu 1604 because I'm still running 1604 because it's still working. Go figure. Uh, no, the game had absolutely no issues, uh, at least uh, mixed with the working wise. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it can get the four. All right. Um, over here on Kombuntu, 1710. Whatever it is this week, Kirtle 414. Whatever it is this week. Um, yeah, man. Everything worked. 980. Played it at 3840 by 2160. Solid 60. Tried it at 1080. Same effect. Uh, really, the only complaint I can't dig in a chair for this is the fuck is this game doing? Like at the initial load because I, I cracked open H top. And look, it's like, you're not doing anything. You're just making me wait on a loading screen. I, I don't get it, Brad. It's thing. But yeah, man, I'll give it a solid four. Straight up. Yeah, I know that, that initial loading time is a little weird on uh, Fedora 26, 64-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 980. But uh, once you get in the game, at least at least with the NVMe drive, the game remembers, oh, hey, I got really fast storage. And then it just loads instantly. Pro Bonus points, because they actually give you something to do during the loading screen which I wish more games would do just mm -hmm. because <laughs> you get to play nice. with balls in the loading screen. <laughs> yeah, Listen, I love playing with balls. You can quote me on that. No problems. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's the thing to do. So yeah, I'll give it four chairs and that's four chairs for makes with the working. How about the shiny and the sounds, Ven? What'd you think? Hey man, uh, I think something you noticed on the live stream that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's a Patreon goal that we have. Thanks everyone for supporting that. Oh, shameless plug. Uh, so much pop in, man. I, I mean, it can make finding the relics a bit difficult, but the pop in didn't bother me as much as the complete lack of options for anti-leasing. They're not there. They don't exist. Oh yeah. And uh, Pedro will talk about that normally because listen, I don't, I, I don't bitch about anti-lacing, but it's just a damn shame to see something that's like kind of pretty be all jaggy. Uh, what are you looking at? You're lo looking at video audio listeners. Basically, uh, if you like pastel colors, this is the game for you. I think Jill was even talking about certain games that have that uh, color scheme. This is mm -hmm. one of them. If you've ever played a Mario Zelda game from the N64 era with an HD texture pack, that's kind of what you're going to be getting a whole lot of that. Um, very influenced, I think by Zelda, even that first, uh, like airframe, the wing kit you get is like, that's very Triforce mm -hmm. looking thing. Um, it's pretty, I like the music completely inoffensive music, not something I would jam out to, but didn't cost me to put on Slayer, man. I, I throw a solid three in this direction. Oh yeah, for sure. It's very, it's very pretty, yeah. and I do like how the visuals and sound design really do mesh together. Like the, they actually put some fun to it because, like, when you when you uh, rotate, you get a little piano noodling, and it, try as I might, I couldn't get it to go off beat. So good on them for that. That's a nice little touch. Um, yeah, the there there's some issues. The I mean, the anti aliasing didn't really bother me because I'm playing it at UHD. So I mean, shit, it's 
it, it is what it is. I, if I can make out Jaggies, then somehow I've developed telescopic vision. Um, the texture pop in though, a hundred percent is a thing. Yeah. Uh, when, when you mentioned Zelda, then I kind of agree. There's, I guess Skyward Sword uses a similar sort of soft pastel color palette. So there's definitely some influence there and there's a lot of like blue orange contrasts. Well, even which, down to every, like whichever. the, um, text menu and the noise it makes when the text is coming across, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, the little chime, I, I could, I can definitely see that. I will say though, that like some love was put into this game and how it looks and how it sounds and how that all uh, integrates with the environments and the gameplay. I think they did a really swell job. I'll give it three cheers. Yeah. Uh, well, I have absolutely no issues with the visuals outside of the obvious lack of anti-aliasing because I have 1080p screens and at that resolution, yeah, those jaggies are very, very noticeable to the point where I went to the NVIDIA settings and added a rule to force as high as possible uh, anti-aliasing as I could through the drivers. But it seems like someone got some pre-built AA assets uh, from the Unity store that doesn't really take OpenGL hooks into consideration. So the menu would be al- anti-aliased but the actual game models wouldn't be. So that was a little bit annoying. And for a game with such a smooth color color palette, seeing aliased everything, it's it's a bit jarring. Uh, The sound effects, they were very good. Uh, Like, um, was it? Jordan mentioned it. Uh, The, like, everything you do has a little chime or a little tune that accompanies it. The sound effects were very good. The music, I had to kill it because at one point it sounded like someone was stepping on a cat's tail uh, and then they ran that through a MIDI converter and then played the result through a a synthesizer. A lot of thuhs in that sentence. Um, And that really bugged me. And when a game forces me to mute its soundtrack, it's not looking at a very good score. So two chairs. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, P- P- Pitra's lack of taste, with none notwithstanding, it's two chairs for uh, the shiny and the sounds. Um, how about the controls? Because this this is where this game I feel kind of falls apart a little bit. Tell me about it. What? 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 All right. Well, uh, number one, damn you, inverted controls. You can see this in the in my <laughs> Thursday playthrough of this. But at one point, I get fed up with the inverted controls <laughs> and switch it to just regular controls. And then I realize that my muscle memory has adapted to inverted controls, so I had to switch it back. I don't know, <laughs> man. I, I, I was watching worse. you do that stream, and you're like, "Oh, inverted controls!" Like, yeah, that's how all flight games should be. Because he's going to change him back. Oh God, he's going to change him to the. Derptastic. Like, l- 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 listen, I I understand that if you're playing a flying fly, flying game, you should be using inverted controls. I understand that. That's how airplanes work. I wanted to try it out for the sake of, and we'll talk about this more in the fun section. Crashing into everything repeatedly. That said, everything worked fine on the DualShock Four, which is uh, something that can't be say, said for uh, every single game. Uh, everything was mapped out really, sa- well, relatively sanely, anyways. The, the steering is a little weird, but that's just because, I guess, for me, I'm just not experienced with, like, flight sim games and anything like that. Um, Ven's going to talk about the camera, and I will say that there it is kind of annoying that the only way you can kind of really get your bearings is by finding one of those perches. But other than that, it, everything was relatively solid. I'd give it three chairs. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Definitely another way you can go about that is something I didn't see take advantage of is the slingshot mechanic where you can kind of spin around backwards and take a look and launch yourself back. It's um upper left bumper button. It kind of worked out of the box over here with the steam controller, but uh, Pedro is going to talk about this later. Uh, and he's kind of right. You definitely need to change your areola controller, your steamy business to the twin stick mm-hmm. config because that'll just make life tolerable. But that said, man, these controls, yeah, they're, they're a bit dog shit. Well, I guess I should say the camera controls, or the complete fucking lack of camera controls are, in fact, dog shit. Um, first time I think I've ever wanted a point of view slider. That that would be nice. That would be ha- very handy. Because, you know, just closing this out, the controls, yeah, man, you know, they work, but the complete lack of options 
to actually give you some control over what they're doing outside of being rebindable. That's why you don't, you know, get one share. But yeah, they're, they're just bad. It's just a bad control scheme. It's even more stupid if you try attempt, <laughs> nay, dare to try to play this with a keyboard and gerbil. Because you got you to use your gerbil buttons, like <laughs> rotate it. You can't do any movement with a gerbil. It's just fucked. I'd say try it on a dare only. But I'll throw two in its direction. Mm -hmm. Pedro, round this out. Yeah, no, the controls would be totally fine if it weren't for that fact that the uh, right areola, by default, is mapped to a mouse-like joystick configuration. And this is exactly why Steam uh, or Valve gave the option for developers to set a preferred uh, control scheme for their games, really. you can, If you're a developer, you can actually set a little option when you publish the game that says if players have a Steam controller, you pick either mouse, um, mouse-like mouse joystick, uh, regular gamepad, uh, gamepad with improved camera control, or uh, the twin stick that Ven mentioned. It works fine in the twin stick and the uh, regular gamepad um, mode. But if you, if you try to play this with the mouse-like, because at that point, the right areola acts like a touchpad. And that is just horrible. No, no, don't do that. And by default, I didn't mean to do that, but yeah, there it goes. <laughs> uh, I would like the option to not have to get out of the game, go into big picture mode, change the controller config, and then play the game. That's kind of annoying. So... It gets three chairs because it's more of an annoyance. It's not really missing functionality. It's just missing something. Not right. You don't have to go into big picture mode to adjust, to adjust the Steam Controller stuff, but that's... Uh, oh, yeah, they have that That now. is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're... they're, they're it, it's, it's, a little, it's a little fucky. I've complained about it before. Anyways, that's two chairs for the controls. Let's put a bow on it for fun. Ven, did you have fun? Hey, man, do you know what would make this game a bit more engaging? For me, at least. I'm going to say this. Uh, one word. Damage. Yeah. Because until that happens, uh, for me, personally, it's bounce off shit until you re reach your destination simulator 2018. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have, there's no reason not to go, all right, I'm, I'm going to aim in this direction and smash into shit my way there until I end up getting there. Um Outside of that, I'm, I'm going to hit it for the menus. Menus are really bad, not really usable with a keyboard or a gerbil, but all right, that's the thing. Also, no option to back out of conversations once they start. You got to go through the whole damn mm. thing. And sometimes the um, fish sub wants to read off like an encyclopedia to you. <laughs> and that can really tie it up. I don't know, man. I think maybe this might make for a fun mobile or like VR gear experience, but at nineteen ninety nine, what stinky cash is? That's a hard sell for what basically amounts to a fuck around simulator, even though it is particularly pretty. So, yeah, man, at twenty bucks, they say you could power through this in like three or four hours. Um, I tried. I really enjoyed the visuals of it. The audio didn't bother me. The concept's neat, but th there's nothing there that kept me engaged after, say, 30 minutes. And it's like, all, all right, more of the same, more of the same. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but I will say the reviews on the Steam page, pretty legit, reasonably accurate. Mm-hmm. Jordan? Oh, I was going to let, I was going to pass it off to Pedro, but, you know, sure, why not? Let's go old school. Yeah, I, I really gotta agree with you on the on the damage thing. Um, because otherwise the only thing that really encourages you to get better at any of the flying is just the annoyance of smashing into things. In the in the sun level, like the where you got Mr. Marionette dude, um, mm -hmm. there are a couple places where you gotta mm -hmm. go look where if you are not spot on with your maneuvering, you just you gotta be like a pong master or something, because otherwise you're not going anywhere. Um the the upgrade system so here, here here's the thing i feel this game would be a lot better if they actually took some time to explain some things to you because the upgrade system is kind of unclear you can unlock different glider types you can get some mods for it but it's not clear what's on and what isn't and what's required um 
I find that sometimes it's a little unclear when the game asks you to do something to advance the plot. They're like, oh yeah, something will be in that direction. Just go engage with it. And I can understand. I guess it's kind of fun to, you know, fuck around and experiment until you, um, what, until you find what you need to do to progress to like finding switches and hitting them, which I thought were just like antenna or whatnot. I didn't realize <laughs> you actually had to hit them. I uh, was for, screaming for at the live stream. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that 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 did not there there were a couple moments where like that did not click and until I accidentally rammed it I'm like, "Oh, oh. Oh." But I mean, that it it that but that sort of thing pivots to being annoying eventually. And while 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 I did complete the level and played a little little bit more of the one after that, uh it just felt a, it could get a little frustrating. Just uh, like I, I'm not clear what I, I I want to play you game. You're you're interesting me. The story is kind of interesting. I like the visuals. I'm I'm trying to get engaged here, and the game doesn't really help me all that much. Um, and I mean, while all the environments are super pretty and gorgeous and they're fun to explore, um, looking around repeatedly for wind and relics can get a little boring. And I I don't, I don't know. I want to like this game, but there's a lot of stuff wrong with it. Um. There's there's some Japanese concept that states that like beauty is sort of inherent in like flaws like wabi sabi or something I don't know I'm probably gonna get qual- called as racist for that whatever do it I don't care come fight me on the internet I'm like nine feet tall um, I don't know I'm gonna I'm give it two chairs it, it it needs it definitely needs some work that that's all I'm gonna say yeah for a game where you fly around uh, setting it inside a spherical inverse world is somewhat counterintuitive okay now don't get me wrong i know the cave flyer genre is a thing but this isn't it uh the point here isn't to navigate difficult tight space to avoid death and reach the objective as ven and jordan already mentioned there is no damage so you don't die you really don't the point here is to explore and find the relics find the story of what happened to the world's Find the demigods, become the ultimate wind creature, and restore a life to the world. Uh, It's about exploration, it's about movement, it's about enjoying the visuals, enjoying what you're looking at. And I've already said that movement is kind of a thing you take for granted in some games, but... Then you have the example of something like Valley, which took movement and made it awesome. It made the entire game about movement, and it felt great. Movement here, it just feels like you're flailing about for most of the time. Uh, it's You're literally stuck in sal- uh, in, on the inside of a very small round sphere, and you just keep running into walls. And then they force you down a tight corridor, and you're going to smash into that wall. If their intention with this game was to induce claustrophobia, mission accomplished. If it was for anything else, yeah, no. Mm, I can't really give it a one chair because I can see that it's not a terrible game. It just, it needs more. So two is the best I can do. And that totals up to one chair for the fun segment. And gives us two chairs, Lestrider, for the inner space um final thoughts i think this this is a nice game to like get stoned and chill out and kind of just derp around and but i mean you're you're gonna have a hard time selling it to people who are expecting it or are expecting to play it for hours on end quite possibly, it does some man. stuff right yeah it, it almost feels like it was a mobile game that got out of hand May, maybe the menus I, I, look like may- it <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it's Unity, so they're probably they're probably banking on this coming to mobile at some point. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with you about the the VR thing, just because like it's not that sort of game. But I mean, what kind of game is it really? Mm, yeah, that 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 that's the question. I don't know. Maybe if you yeah. can pick this up on Crazy Cell, because what I'm scared about recommending this in any way is if I wasn't reviewing this. This would have been five minutes of me fuck around simulator and peace out. Done. <laughs>